global sexist alliance. He devoted his heart to the sexist. He spent much of his time in sexist. And uh, I don't know what to say, basically, he's going to set us free. Okay, <laughs> the floor is yours. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is the um, final finale, I think. <laughs> uh, thank you for giving the chance from the NDCC uh, and committees uh, to give me a chance at this platform to share some of my humble knowledge. And uh, thanks to the Prof. Cameroon for introducing me. I'm not <laughs> like, so sexist, anyway. <laughs> and usually, uh, people who do sexist are usually very contagious and very <laughs> <laughs> like to infect people about what they like. So today I'm talking about something about very heavy yet I try to make it very simple for you to understand. I think here majority of you have encountered sexist before, right? Um, and you know that sexist is unpredictable, the outcome is unpredictable, even though there's so much of so many of protocols was created. And recently one hour bundle from three hours, from six hours, now one hour even they make it. So and previously, the early mode therapy was like, you know, now was being phased off. But today, beforehand, I want to let you know that why I talk about this is because why this protocol unable to work for a similar type of patient. Maybe there is something else that we underlook or under recognize. So, post dysregular response syndrome, actually, we are talking about SIRS, you know, SIRS, systemic inferior response syndrome. However, this is more than SIRS. Right. So, sepsis syndrome was first described in the 1980s, yeah, and also was later on they revamped it and redefined it into um, 1990 something. They refined the sepsis syndrome replaced with SIRS criteria. Do you see this um, slide? There's something C A R S and yeah, car, uh, like a big car. Actually, cars it was introduced at that time, but nobody really understand it, so that's why they put, put away. And later on, in 2010, they introduced another term called PICS, eh? P-I-C-T, not picture, but later on, I'll talk about this persistent inflammation, immunosuppressed catabolic syndrome. So when this syndrome here, actually I will try to tell you why this syndrome happened and why our therapy was not able to cater this syndrome. With one same protocol, not, not all works. Okay. Recently, 2013, actually 2016, uh, new, the sepsis were redefined again. So there's a lot of hoo-ha happened because they say, oh, what, Q-Sofa replacers, you know, everybody is talking about the Q-Sofa thingy. In fact, today I just want to let you know that this is not the matter of Q-Sofa or what. Because previously, 2000, uh, 1992 and 2001, the sepsis definitions were so simple. They used SIRS, any species with infection, which serves to consider sepsis. And with some organ failure, they consider severe sepsis. And with BP low, then with uh, quick resuscitation, still BP low, sepsis shock. Simple. But however, almost every patient comes to emergency or comes to hospital is sepsis because it's oversensitive, right? So they say it doesn't reflect sepsis uh, emergency, the, the, the sepsis, in, uh, in, uh, sepsis severity. So they will define again the sepsis in uh, which replaced severe sepsis. Currently, the sepsis is equivalent to severe sepsis previously. So it must be read together. Life threatening organ dysfunction, they put at the first line, first thing, causes by dysregulated post response to infections. And later on, they add one more, um, redefine again sepsis shock with sepsis with persistent hypoperfusion or hypotension plus lactate more than two. The lactate more than 2 is quite tough, not all hospitals have a big machine to look for it. But however, the lactate of 2 is what they recommend. So, this is a simplified, simplified chart for you to understand. All patients must have infections and have post dysregulations and must have life threatening organ dysfunction. Sorry. I think it's right. Oh, sorry. Uh, Alright. So, how to quantify? Now I'm talking about this, this group. The later, later talk, I will talk about this. Okay. This is quite difficult to understand because previously we only talked about SIRS, but there are so many other syndromes that we are not really um, familiar with and under-recognized. However, do you have a, do you have experience with whether eight patients uh, patient with infections, you think it's sepsis, only seven of them 
fulfills this criteria. But for one, this one, a typical one, it doesn't fulfill, but you know that this is success. The white side doesn't show you. Maybe they are in this or this. So, sex, uh, how this regulation respond is like, understanding of it is quite difficult. It's like my man trying to describe the elephant, everybody have their own opinion. Because it's so microscopic. Look at this chart, I know everybody is like um, back to our <laughs> basic again, uh, so boring, you know. <laughs> but this one is important because if you talk about infection, if you know a bit of this, then it will help you. So, first of all, we know that there is cellular immunity, right? Which is our fibrocyte, our monocyte, our, our macrophage, something like that, right? And also the human immunity, which is the immunoglobulin, IgM, IgG, right? And also we have inflammatory response. To understand this, actually all this activation is all due to lymphocyte, yeah? Lymphocyte, not neutrophil at all. Lymphocyte activate neutrophil. Right? So this is the basic things that you need to understand. So this chart, this chart is important. It's my whole lecture actually. This chart. So how a normal scenario of infected patients come to hospital? How they present patient? First, can you imagine this chart is a uh, this graph is talking about the inflammation, the submission of inflammation versus the time of the cause of the infection. So do you see this? When a pathogen, any pathogen like viral, bacteria, so a parasite come in, you will have such of inflammation. It will be a, a positive inflammation markers because cytokine. As you know, cytokine, right? Cytokine kind of pro-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory cytokines, right? So this cytokine will cause fever, uh, cause increase of heart rate, cause a toxic to to eradicate the infections. So it will give you a sign of surge. This is where we always define on the last 20 years. We are looking into this segment. However, with the modern advancement of medications, we prolong this state until the patient was a bit, um, because the patient come in many times to hospital or patient prolong at home to come to hospital. So this condition will exhaust, meaning that the inflammation keep on coming and the infection was not eradicated. So the cycle will exhaust, right? So it will go into a hyperinflammation state, whereby this is where we call the CAS. CAS means what? Compensated anti-inflammatory response syndrome. So this was this was described since 1990s, but because the scientists, the anesthetists, the group of scientists, critical care, they still not very understand about the concept, so they try not to confuse people, so they try to drop it out for the definition. However, if this car syndrome, car means that you're trying to, try to repair rather than kill the bacteria. You try to repair to prolong your life rather than kill the bacteria. So you will prolong your life and sometimes you can stay together with the bacteria together like a compensation symbiosis. Then you can prolong your life like carrier. Or some of you maybe have a deteriorate more that the bacteria come in or the pathogen more flourish, more, 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 uh, more strong then they will take over you and this is called immunocompromised state. This immunocompromised state is whereby with every day you see in the emergency department, every day you see the elderly people with multiple admission come to the hospital, they have this nasal infection, this viral reactivation. And this syndrome we call it the peak syndrome. It's persistent inflammation, immunosuppressed catabolism syndrome. It's quite difficult to pronounce, but I, I will have to say you. So, this chart also is trying to explain some of the atypical patient scenario. Okay? For a patient who has strong immunity, good immunity, it should follow the black line. Where we, we get a flu, we might have a toxilitis, let's say, we will have a, a surge of inflammation, fever, then after that, we will come to come down again. And when the fever just go and eradicate for all the infection, all eradicate, then we will go into a space where class, a minimum, a small period of class, then we we'll go back to the normal baseline. This is called normal inflammation homostasis. This is, you can explain when you have a flu, after five years of flu, then after recovery, the post viral syndrome is like so higher, so lethargic. This is where the class is. However, you didn't notice it because it's not very prominent. However, for those who have pre-immune 
system very good. Um, we found that um, some regions of the geographical regions, people like uh, Africans, uh, tall, big muscles, people, they have a better immunity, supposedly, because they have a total protein higher. So they will respond more faster and overly overkill the bacteria. So they will have a surge on the cytokine, which created the cytokine storm. Whereby the cytokine storm, either they can revert by themselves slowly, or they either revert and they go up, shoot higher and higher, become a septic shock. Septic shock, which is muscle magic, the death, multi organ failure, and die. This is the first required early death, the early death for sepsis. However, those patients who can survive this state and the infection is still there, we couldn't kill them. The patient can uh, unable to kill them because of the prolonged immune, immune compromise. Then they will end up into a very cast phase, we call it cast phase, immunocompromised phase, and you have a chronic inflammation, but you cannot overcome the infection. Yet, you try to repair to mitigate, mitigate the infection, like, like hibernate, like you try to hibernate, and you try to prolong your life until the end, you still end it with uh, still uh, multi organ failure and late die. So there is two types of death in the sepsis rather than one type of death. And there is also one spectrum of early uh, septic shock. Septic shock is here and here. Why we have to differentiate these two? Because the management is totally different, the personalized therapy will be different. Right? So, CAS syndrome is actually uh, happened in the persistent infection patient and it is trying to mitigate the inflammation, trying to stay alive, and then they try to deactivate those destructive inflammations that cause the body harm to control the inflammation to survive longer. However, this process of if this process prolongs, it will cause an immunocompromised state. Alright, so how do you know that this is CAS? When a patient comes to a hospital, you touch the patient, it's cold. You put a temperature poke in the in the ear, you will see hypothermia, 36 degrees, which usually they say normal in our all whatever household we tell you, oh, the, in the temperature normal, 35 by 5, normal, uh, so normal. Because high only considered abnormal, low is not. Wrong. Low is abnormal. 36 and below is abnormal. So this is the first sign of CAS. The second sign of CAS is low percentage of lymphocyte. Low percentage of lymphocyte means that it's not the neuroprofile high, rather that it's low in neuroprofile, less than, less than 10 maybe. And also they have a failure of produce inflammation markers. So this is roughly the vital sign you can have a low. This is a first which everybody understand this, however, this is where the cast is. Cast will show you some normal, we call it normal vital signs. Okay, which is we miss. They have a low total height, they have low temperature, they might have a normal heart rate, or they have a normal, uh, normal respiratory rate. Be careful about this. Why we so need to pick up? Later on I will talk about that. So, just now I show in the graph the persistent inflammatory immunosuppressed and catabolic syndrome. Eh? This syndrome was newly introduced in 2010, whereby I think every of us here have this. Why is it so? Okay. What happened to this syndrome? When you have a chronic inflammation, let's say a patient comes to ICU because of trauma, then they have a one way of search. And then in the ICU infection again, so second search of search. The third one, the third infection comes and also from here again. So the third is multiple hit on the infection. So you produce a prolonged inflammation. However, in ICU, what they do? They control the fever, they control the inflammation markers, they control the symptom. So it becomes uh, un it, it, it undermine that the patient actually is inflamed, but it's a low inflammation persistent. Persistent low inflammation. And the patient will push into a cachexic state. Uh, on the cytokine, you cannot produce all this already because it's already long war, right? So, in this condition, we will have immunosuppressed because of a prolonged inflammation that cause the, in our neutrophil dysfunction or of dysfunction. So, this is something a chart like this. Okay, the first infection, the second infection, the third infection, the fourth infection, the fifth infection, the infection. And this is repairing anti-inflammation anti to protect your body getting the organ failure. The more, the, the longer time the infection, the longer all the, the 
can kind of reduce and your body is uh, going to the immune compromise. And actually this happens to us now. Every day we sleep very less. We sleep at 1 o'clock and wake up at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. Our cytokine is all burnt out actually. So when you burn out every day and then the boss texts you, what's that? You have to be respond now, stack, you know. Those stressors actually make you a chronic inflammation because every time your fight the fight hormones is always high. This is where you happen. Okay, that's why modern people actually have some of immunocompromised state. I put that in the comma, right? And also, whoever go to gym, every day is just gym, every day go to gym. Five days and uh, those also have chronic inflammation. So be careful about that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not talking about gym, it's not good, but more than it's good, okay? How over healthy eating, uh, eating also not good, yeah? So, PICS actually define and uh, prolong hospitalization 14 days. And the CRP must be more than 150. This is deciliter, maybe 15 for the uh, some of the lab. And the albumin is the one who I want to highlight. Any patient with an albumin less than 30, they are in a very condition called PICS, which is immunocompromised. It's a uh, quite a quite an interesting finding here. So, how this chart translates to clinicals? Wow. So we receive patient from uh, ED. It can be from this segment, then we come, maybe here, we come, okay, or maybe here, oh, sorry. Maybe it's here, here, here. Different way is the time. When patient is search, uh, you see here, sepsis bundle can use in either classes. Sepsis bundle, one hour bundle, we talk about uh, fluid dialectic measurement, talking about fluid continuous uh, for hypotension, as well as uh, the antibiotics, multi-broad spectrum was. Uh, can be used in the first hour. After that, we need to personalize each of our uh, patient. For first patient, you might need to start an anti-inflammatory dose of uh, uh, steroid. Maybe NSAID is multiple research now talk about NSAID. This can control the inflammation to reduce the cytokine storm. And peritoclet dysfunction, we talk about tomorrow, there is one question on that. To repair the peritoclet dysfunction due to a pro-inflammatory uh, condition, as well as uh, we can use the elbow to correct it. And those who are in class, maybe we need to support a bit for their reserve. They have not enough reserve. We need to maybe, we, those patients who are already on long term steroid, we have to give the regular dose. And those who have hypo or behind adjacent crisis, or because sepsis is something like a pan, a transient pan hypomethodism. So this, this condition actually can be uh, because of the blood discharge to the endocrine gland, so you have less hormone, or because of long term stress caused hypo. Uh, hypo, uh, hypo, uh, 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 so maybe a low dose of steroid, sometimes pyroxene can revert the condition. And also the anotrope should be stuck here with lesser or cardiac, cardiac depressed. Albumin must be corrected. Why? So, because, you see, everybody knows that you have to give antibiotic, right? But however, a lot of antibiotic is protein bound. Rosalvin is 100%. Protein bound. I think here of us, a lot of people use it, rosapine for the first line of septic shock or sepsis. However, the precondition of uh, like, uh, albumin less than 30, the elbow, the rosapine won't work. Even, so what drugs is the best? I, I show the list of drugs here, antibiotics. I know that you <laughs> Okay, rosapine is here, but surprisingly, omentin is here. Omentin is less protein bound, broad spectrum, easy to heal. So maybe uh, you can have a choice of augmenting, maybe you also can have a pyramid medical Tazuzin is in the between here. Tazuzin between here. So prior to give antibody, please look at the patient uh, albumin level. 40 to 50 patient, 40, uh, 40 to 50 percent, uh, percent of patients who ill have hypoalbumin in Malaysia as well. So you have to make sure that we treat the albumin which is less than 30. Antibody won't work in the albumin level less than 25. And in minutes fluid, we recommend balance the right, balance the light crystalline, then balance the light. If possible, if let's say after you give it the 30 meals, which you cannot, we can recommend for 4% albumin. However, this is just a recommendation, you can stick with it or not. And cryptoclase is something that uh, we are talking about. When there's an inflammation happening, it will destroy the layer of the gel layer over the capillary. This gel layer protects the dirt to stick on the wall. If let's say there is a uh, breach of the glycocalyx, then there is thrombosis happen. 
then the consumption here you see later on probably we'll talk about that maybe and then and then um, then will cause a uh, uh, capillary thrombosis and it will cause vicious cycle of the IBC. And then fluid can destroy this layer. A lot of fluid given to intravenous skin can destroy this layer, this layer, right? So be careful on the fluid also. So I thought about lactate, this is my lifestyle. Lactate, we know high is not good, but there is something that you have to look into it. Very low lactate also is not good. Why? Lactate consists of two components to cause lactate. One is hypoperfusion that cause hypoxia. The other one is the pyruvate level. Or the cell cannot take up the pyruvate. If the pyruvate is low, then lactate is low also. So why I talk about this? Because a lot of patients with sepsis, they are malnutrition. They are not taking on really well. And they are high, uh, transient pan hypoperfusion. So the insulin cannot it's not the cell can not sensitive to insulin, they cannot take up the nutrients. And later on, even hypoxia happen. Then pyruvate is low, then you show normal, near normal uh, lactate. So lactate is not sensitive in the this group, and our own uh, research actually showed that 150 patients of sex, 150 patients of sepsis, actually seven of them have normal lactate, and some uh, and ten of them actually is quite ill with low lactate. So, maybe you have a clinical judge and see whether the patient is very ill and look at the lactic level. Then you have to judge. If ill, low lactic level, please do something on substrate nutrition. A lot, a lot of patients in ED 24 hours, no feeding, not giving anything for them. I think this is something that we have to bother around whether we can feed them or not early. For me, I will start once patient can eat, patient prefer, skip food, can eat orally is the best, not IV, chemical, right? So this is our website, maybe you can have more about um, uh, information at uh, www.mysuccess.org um, So we will, I, I think um, I can add here But, um, oh, one more slide, sorry, I have one more slide, very important It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And, uh, I can, okay So how are we going to approach the success in patient? First, identify them by using the criteria, right? So now we talk about SIRS Please go into class as well, please after that, look into biomarkers, whether the biomarkers CRP, lab, PCT, DAOs, we have available at every hospital, CRP. If high, then you look into the patient whether it's fit to start the first hour bundle, whether the hypoperfusion or hypertension or lactic one and four, alright? After that, each of the patient has to be personalized therapy. There is no any standard protocol can treat a sepsis patient. Simple. Start entering feeding as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much.